Good morning. All right, I think we're officially on. Those of you on live stream, some of you are watching the membership classes after the fact because you can't be here due to work. So we have, we have the ever-increasing amount of membership sessions. Um, I think today and next week that should do it. Uh, and I think it's just good, those of you who are coming in and whether you're already members or you're under the tent, my microphone seems a little bit on the hot side. Okay, thank you. I'm like, where's that techie when, you oh, there he is. Um, I, that's a little bit better, thank you. So what you should have up till this point, which I don't believe we're going to be giving you pretty much uh, any more than what you got today, Hopefully everybody got the two larger packets of information. Um, Susan, did you get two new packets for today? All right, so let's get Susan equipped. Lynn, I need your help. All right. There you go. There you go. Make sure you guys have those. Uh, these are pretty important. One of them is very practical if you haven't done it. The other is actually what pretty much dictates how we govern our church. You know, we are a registered nonprofit organization with the Commonwealth as well as with the uh, Internal Revenue Service. So there's, there's official accounting going on and there are official guidelines in which as a... Uh, you know, as a registered nonprofit, and certainly, I mean, more importantly, before the Lord, um, we, we conduct business with church uh, to the best of our ability so that you as members, you who will become members likely, and again, if you haven't uh, officially made that decision, we would, I'd like to talk with you. Uh, I want, I'm going to talk with all of you privately. Um, not, not, I won't get that opportunity necessarily today, but between now and when we formally announce your, uh, the new members coming forward, which I believe we're going to do the last August, uh, last Sunday in August, the day of the baptism. Um, but uh, what you should do is basically be aware of, um, you know, we have your testimony. Uh, you have, you've had an opportunity to think with us along with our, our, our information that we've given out. And I pray that, you know, if there are questions that you have, because again, I mean, how many of us have come from a previous church before we were here? And I certainly went through membership in all the churches that I've ever been a part of. I, I'm a firm believer in church membership. I believe it is, it is probably the remaining commitment outside of salvation that every Christian should make. The people that I know who make no commitment to, uh, they, won't, they won't become part of a local church in form of the official membership. Um, I've, I haven't seen great things with that. Um, I am not questioning their salvation for one moment. I, it's not a salvation issue. I really believe what, when you become a church member, you are saying, I am willing to be under the authority of that local church. And I will submit to the leadership of that church. And I believe that what God is doing there, I trust. And I have a voice in that congregation. I have a voice when things come down to voting on things. If you've got questions that come up at one of our meetings, yeah, you know, church is spending money. I mean, we're talking about spending them over a million dollars when all is said and done, when these buildings arrive on this property. Some of you go out. Some of you get a monthly check from the government. Some of you are actually working um, you know, you, 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 you are, you know, you're gainfully employed and you're trusting that Grace Lighthouse Church is being wise with the money that, the, that, that is being given every week. I, I can't even tell you how pleased I am with what was the response last Sunday to Teen Challenge. Uh, it's hard for me to even fathom. So they had their table, which they obviously had people approach them, and we had you know, over 100 and, I think 105 people in attendance. Now, let me tell you this. Our, our own church offering was very strong last Sunday, just the offering that we take for general church. But by the time Teen Challenge left, with the gift that we had already set aside of $1,000 to give them, they left here with, I understand, $5,500 
dollars for their ministry. And that, yeah, hallelujah. And that was people, people like you and me signing up to, um, you know, to either sponsor some. They, they came here with a goal, I think, of five or six sponsorships. They left with nine. All the sales that happened at the, with the cutting boards, and then just the offering that we took on their behalf was really uh, incredible. But So they said we are like the second strongest giving church that they have when they come out on a Sunday morning. All that to say God's people are trusting this church that we would do our best to make sure because when you give you really are giving to God that's the way you should think when I give yes you are giving to the local church you're giving through the local church but you're trusting that your offering is going to be used for the purposes that God has set aside for this local assembly for this body of Christ and we want to be faithful at that and so What I do want to do now is talk a little bit about some of those things we didn't get to last week. And I think the the main document that I'll reference today, which give you an overview, is this one that has the Grace Lighthouse logo right on the front of it. It has the blue and yellow ink. So have that handy. Uh, We want to talk a little bit about that. So the big thing with church members is that they should be on the same page with the pastor. They should know where the pastor's going. They trust his vision. They believe in what, where that church is heading, and they're behind it. And they will do their part to support that mission, that purpose, that the pastor is under the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the structure of this local church. I serve really at the pleasure of Jesus Christ as pastor. Right? I get to serve him as pastor. I also realize that it is an enormous responsibility that I've been tasked with uh, as a pastor. It is my job to protect the flock that is under my care and to make sure that no false doctrine creeps in this place. And I am a false doctrine sniffer. All right? I will go after it. I will not tolerate it. I don't believe that it should be uh, something that a church should just tolerate. Uh, Paul says that when I depart, savage wolves will come in to to divide and to destroy the flock. We are up against opposition in terms of protecting the purity of the gospel, and we don't want anything to get in the way of that. I don't want anything to hinder the grace of God at work in your life. So I will fight for you as your pastor. I will protect you as your pastor. I will go out of my way to make it clear that if I think something's, you know, we need to talk, I'll talk to you. I'll do it lovingly, but I'm also going to do it firmly because I do that because I'm under the jurisdiction of the Lord Jesus Christ. Under there is the pastor, and then under me and along with me is our church leadership. That's our two deacons, and that's five or six board leadership members. They're more like our trustee or stewardship board. They make sure that the money that we're spending, that the decisions that we're making are healthy for the church. The deacons, the two deacons of our church, we deal with issues like benevolence, people in crisis, needs. I need sometimes a sounding board to talk to these guys, Paul Andrews, as well as John Moffa, and before Mark, uh, before John and uh, Paul, we had Mark DeRoche, who was a wonderful Sunday school teacher. Some of you remember Mark? Oh, yeah. Mark's in South Carolina with Mary, and I believe they're going to be up not too long from now um, to see us again. But they love what God is doing here. But Mark, is, Mark was a wonderful deacon, uh, did a great job at helping and being willing. And I love the fact, I love when Mark came in to teach our Sunday school, Um, He said, Pastor, I have a calling on my life to teach, but I will not teach contrary to what you teach here at this church. Even if I don't agree with everything that you might say, and I'm like, how could that be? No, I'm just, but um, I, you know, I try to get my my clarity of uh, certainly from uh, everything I teach is from the scripture. I am a big believer that the Apostle Paul 
gave the instructions for the church. They did not come through Peter. They did not come through James. And it doesn't mean that I minimize the words of Peter or James or Jude or first or second or third John as we're studying uh, one of the other Johannian epistles, the book of the Revelation. Um, and John certainly mentions the church, but the apostle Paul get, was tasked by Jesus to teach the church. The, you see the Apostle Paul, he is the one that shows this new thing, because the church really is a, is a new thing. It's a, it's a special organism, because the church is comprised of a Jew or a Gentile all under Jesus. Now, God still has a plan for the nation of Israel. We don't mess with that one. And God has a plan for the church. But any Gentile today who calls upon Christ to save them, wherever they are, if they're in Iran, North Korea, you name it, Timbuktu, Alaska, you name, you name it. If anybody in Wareham asks Jesus, calls upon Christ to save them, they are placed into the church. Now, they haven't become an official member of a local church at that point, but they are in the body of Christ. The same goes with a Jew. We have Joe Jew come into our church today, and Joe Jew understands, like, wow, I, I actually feel like I never understood what Jesus really did for me. The Jewish Messiah died for me. And he says, I want to believe him as my own Savior. The moment Joe Jew calls on Jesus, Joe Jew becomes part of the church. That's where Joe Jew now resides. He's in the church invisible if you would or at least not to god but certainly to us you and i don't know everybody who's saved but we certainly i go on the word if you write down on your little testimony page there uh how you came to faith in christ i go with your i go with the record of what you write i don't care when it was if you're three five twenty nine i just want to know that you've actually had an experience a salvation experience with christ you called upon jesus to save you you believe that he died on the cross for you. You believe he rose again for you, and you've called on him to save you. And we are going to talk about something quite powerful during the service today. You don't want to miss it. So I want you saved. I don't want you just a church member. I want you a saved church member. The Bible teaches that those, and we looked at that in our week number one, those who were added to the church, they were counted right they were counted somebody was keeping track and i believe that represented those who would be placed into local churches somebody was keeping track as we looked at if you haven't filled this out yet make sure in the next week you have written your testimony it doesn't have to be long only 10 pages no just teasing uh but if you uh if you haven't filled this out yet i, I like to know a basic background your, your, your first and last name, describe briefly when you asked Jesus to save you, and then have you been baptized as a believer in Jesus Christ? We are going to do a baptism on the 27th of August down at the Flag Residence. If you've never been to the, a baptism with our church there, you don't want to miss it. It is a wonderful location. Uh, and we've got some people who are stepping forward and they want to be baptized. And if you haven't been baptized as a believer, this is your, your infant baptism. You really weren't attending that one, <laughs> okay? I'm not saying that didn't matter to your parents. I'm, I was infant baptized. But believer's baptism is by immersion. That's believer's baptism. And you should be baptized if you haven't. I'm just saying. Now, you're not going to heaven if you haven't been baptized? Absolutely not. However, it is your chance to really out yourself at a baptism. I belong to the Savior. I've been buried with him, right? I was, actually, I was crucified with Jesus on the cross. You say, how did that happen? Well, that's what God did to you when you trusted him. When Jesus died on that cross, every sinner who believes him, they died with him. Every sinner was buried with him. Every sinner was raised to newness of life. You are now called saints. <laughs> You are the believing ones who become righteous before God because of your faith in Jesus Christ. And so th these are those who should be part of the church. There are people who can slip into church membership. We don't necessarily always know maybe where they really, are they re you know. So 
thankfully, the Lord sorts that out, we, but we do our best to provide a due diligence here in making sure that people who want to be part of our church, they are. And if you've already been a member in another church, um, there are times where we, some people will just say, hey, I've been active here. Uh, feel free to call them. They can send sometimes a letter. Yeah, so-and-so, great person. Uh, we bless them and glad they found your church and you know, that sometimes can certainly, but it's also good for you to, going through this class if, to get acquainted with what our church believes. All right, so make sure you fill that out. And I want to go back to what we believe and teach. I think this is important. There's a few in here I don't believe we got to last week, and it kind of opens the door for me to explain some of these documents that you have received. All right, so we've been talking a lot about the church, who it is. We talked about that, so let me make sure you guys know where I'm at. So what we believe and teach, you should have a front and a back of that one. And under the, under the back side, you have the Bible, the church. We believe the Bible is God's inerrant word. Every word is reliable. We have translations of the original texts. The Bible was, was communicated both in Hebrew and in Greek. And we have Bible translators who looked at the Hebrew and the Greek and they've arrived at consensus of this is what these words mean. I believe in literal inspiration of the Scripture. In other words, they, in the original text, the original manuscripts, they were God-breathed, Holy Spirit-backed. Even with all the nuances, some of the challenges with the text, they are God breathed texts, all right? Then the original. That means Hebrew and Greek, right? Uh, we have translations that come over the years, but the original texts are the ones that we rely on in terms of Bible translation. I personally teach from the New King James Version. There are other translations that I will refer to. I will refer to the ESV, the New Living Translation. Notice I didn't say the New World Translation. If you have a copy of the New World Translation, you got that from a Jehovah's Witness. They have messed with that translation. Do not rely upon that. It's not going to teach you the Word of God. I'm not saying a person couldn't read the New World Translation and probably find the Gospel in there. But in terms of accurate Bible scholarship, the Jehovah's Witness translation is inaccurate. So the New King James, the ESV, the English Standard Version, the New Living Translation, very easy to read. I see a lot of uh, people using that particular translation just for ease and comfort. Sometimes it's nice when you have a, um, a translation that you can you know, just sort of comfortably read. Um, ESV and New King James Version, written anywhere between probably an 8th, 10th, 12th grade reading level. So if you have a challenge with reading, you may want to go back to an easier translation. And no shame on you, all right? Some people do not read well. Reading takes time. Reading takes work. Reading is context. I certainly honor the King James Version. Also, I've used the KJV in quoting Scripture. I learned a lot of Scripture through KJV. But I believe these are all translations and they're ones that I think if you have a preference over, over one than the other, that's fine. It's the, as somebody said, what's the right translation? The one you read, okay? That's a good, good way to think about it. All right. So I'm on this page called The Bible, The Church, Spiritual Gifts and Divisions. I just want to talk about spiritual gifting for a, 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 you know, a, a couple of minutes here. So the spiritual gifts... The moment you ask Christ to save you, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit now sealed you, the Holy Spirit is now indwelling you, and the Holy Spirit now wants to use you. That really is what is the marks of a, of an, of a well-understood Christian. It's not just, it's great to get saved, okay? I, 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 I am so thankful for people to get saved. But I'm not just about like, let's just get everybody saved and doing nothing. Let's get them involved and engaged. Let's get on the rescue mission that just rescued them. I mean, you think about the work it takes to bring a soul to Jesus Christ. It might take like 10 years. Come on to this crusade. Come to this movie night. Come to this. Come to our church. <sighs> sometimes it's work to get sinners saved. I mean, sometimes it is utterly agonizing. You rip. You know, you go after these people. You tell them you love them. You explain things to them. Sometimes people don't get it. Listen, this world is under the influence of the evil one. Satan is working so hard to keep people from salvation. 
And Jesus is working very hard to bring people to the Savior, and he's tasked the Christian, the believer, to be, if you would, a little Christ, not Jesus Christ, but a little ambassador of him where you have papers to go to people and reconcile them to God through Christ. We are his ambassadors, as if we've been sent on mission from a country, which is heaven in this case. We are, we are heaven-bound, we are heavenly earth-bound to bring people to the Savior. That's what we do. That should be part of the church's mission. Somebody said to me last week, this came into, my, came into the church, like, there's a sweet spirit in your church. Why? Because we exalt the Savior who rescues and I'm going to fight for this till I breathe my last breath. Amen? Amen? All right, you should do the same. Spiritual gifts. Believers are given gifts by the Holy Spirit for the primary purpose of edifying and building up the church. That's what the spiritual gifting is all about. It can happen in ways that like your gifts might be used and you don't even realize nobody really saw you use your gift. But God did. And he used that gift at that moment for a purpose in which sometimes it's really not our job to do perfect inventory when it comes to our surf, service to Jesus. Sometimes if I even serve Jesus with the wrong motive, well, that one's going to be burnt up at the judgment seat. But sometimes, you know what, it doesn't really matter. I may make a phone call to somebody in our church that nobody, none of you saw me make the phone call. But the phone call was so powerful and so meaningful that we prayed together with the, us on the other end. I was able to ascertain what's really going on in the life of this person. And we prayed and nobody saw it except Jesus. But that person now may be better equipped to come into the local church with a smile on their face. My goodness. Like, like that, like, like the pastor called me and, and like we had a really nice talk and, and again, it's not about me, but it's there are times where, or not just me, but somebody in the church called somebody, somebody called me, somebody here in this room right now who I know very well, going through a difficult time, a person in our church said, can I call them? I want to reach out to them. I was able to follow up with a person going through a lot and they said, yeah, so-and-so reached out to me and I'm like, yeah, see, so... Uh, don't ever underestimate your role as a Christian in the local church. It doesn't, you know, you shaking people's hands here Sunday morning, all well and good, but what happens after you leave here? Are you encouraging your brothers and your sisters? Are you sending maybe an encouraging text message? Pastor, that's wicked awkward for me. Go get over it. Do it. Write, write, you know, just write somebody a note. It doesn't, it doesn't, this ministry doesn't always have to feel like I'm, um, you know, I'm so smooth at this. Do you realize how rough sometimes I feel when I get up here before you guys? I just keep doing it because I know that Jesus wants me to do it and he's equipping me to do it. But some of this is hard. I've had to work through that. I, you know, it's, I've come, come a long way, baby, hopefully. Um, but, but it's really more about now, are we willing to be used of Christ? And fighting through the, you, listen, you've got, I want to tell you guys something. The guy, the, the family who sold us this church land, Donnie and I were over at their um, business, which is right down the street here. Uh, Manny D. Miranda, wonderful man, very generous, and I ref referenced him last week. We wound up over at his collision shop right down the street here. We're talking to him. We have an issue with what's happening with our land right now. We just got a little question we're trying to figure out. Manny's the previous owner. Did he know anything? As we're talking to Manny, and I remember the day, 2019, October 3rd, Manny and his wife Faith are at the closing. I haven't seen Manny that much. Occasionally I might see him and say hi. Sometimes I call him like I do, you know, with a question. And we're talking to him. He says, Faith dropped dead, his wife. Faith dropped dead in December with, from a brain aneurysm. Right in the shop. I'm like, Manny, we had no idea. We didn't know that this happened. So people, and that's not to scare us, but listen, life is brief. Life is very brief. You are safe in Christ, but we don't know. And just because you might say, well, oh, pastor, when I get, you know, again, I'm not, not saying you shouldn't get some training or whatever, but you should be, your willingness to serve Christ doesn't, shouldn't be five years from now. It should be right now. That, take that willingness and let God use that. Let that, that, those spiritual gifts develop. Wow, okay. 
Moving right along. All right. Those who serve by the power of the Holy Spirit. You and I should not be serving just in our own strength. i got to do that again. Oh, they need me at that church. You know, and you got a little grumbling thing going on in your spirit. Like, you know what? You better stay home. If that's the way it's going to be, it's not worth it. And I'm not telling you I don't like, love your help, but I don't, I'm not in your head, so I don't know sometimes like what you might be feeling. Listen, I feel it. Somebody said to me, I think it was Trevor, it's like, it's hot at the tent. People are tired. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Totally on board with that. That's why we're trying to get some comfort in some building soon. But that process has not happened fully yet. We don't exactly know. Where, I mean, listen, we, we set a date of 50 days to be on this land in 2020, 2021, and we made it. We have about 50 days left to make it. All right, I am just, until, until we have to hear otherwise that we're not going to make the September 17th goal, I'm going to the fact that we got the goal and we're trying to make it. Right, Donnie? All right, well said. Um, I like your right. All right, those who serve by the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen the church. You and I are supposed to be strengthening the church and we will be rewarded by the Lord Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. Jesus says, I'm coming and my reward is with me. Christ wants to reward us for serving Him. And that's really from the heart. And that affects our brain and our actions and our willingness and all that stuff that just happens as, as part of serving the Lord. So spiritual gifts. So what I gave you today, which I hope you'll have right in front of you, and I think you should do this if you haven't already. Uh, we've had these pass these around in the past. This is a volunteer survey. That means you do it voluntarily. Okay. Um, this is simply you put your name, your best phone number, and a best email address. And then you're going to take a look at the areas in the past or things you enjoy doing. And these are hands-on things. This could be cleaning. This could be grounds and maintenance. This could be security. Uh, Josh, our security guy, said to me, we need some more security guys. We need some more guys that could actually be, you know, ready to really protect this place in, in, the, in a moment, right? Obviously, we pray that we'll never have to have that happen, but we are, you know, we are looking to expand some of the areas of our church, and I believe one need maybe over time some increased security. We've got movie nights. Well, this church is an open venue. Yes, Jack? We also need some parking. All right, some parking guys. All right, thank you, Jack. Appreciate that. So parking and security, all that kind of falls in the same jurisdiction, but you should take time and take this carefully. You don't have to rush through it, but maybe in ways that you could check off. Like, yeah, if, I, if these are my favorite things to do, this would be a chance for you to express that. Because sometimes, like, we've gotten, this thing has really delivered quite a few volunteers to us. Um, it becomes something that we learn about you that we didn't know. Like, in my previous church, I did this. Well, I just see you sitting in a chair. I didn't realize you did that. Well, why don't we see if we can use that here? And maybe that's something you've been missing. So those are the things that we want to give you an opportunity to you know, kind of fill that in and, and think our Thanksgiving dinner. We have a lot of people that sign up for that thing, but a lot of people want to serve in, in, in places like that. Our movie night, maybe there's something that you could be a part of. Maybe it's being a greeter, making sure that if you, you know, you, whatever the needs might be, you sense somebody's um, got a spiritual question, and maybe you could just be available, kind of have your eyes on the situation. You know, I, I would want to know that that's what you'd want to do, just so I'm clear. Um, but those are things that we could, we could make, a, make it possible for you to you know, be serving in. So take time to fill that out. And on the, on the final three pages is a, you know, kind of an ant question. E each of those questions are for you. Um, how long have you been attending Grace Lighthouse Church? You know, have you gone through membership class with Pastor Dave? How long have you been active in a church, right? Um, so these are things that, uh, they're pretty self-explanatory, but take the time to fill that out. And if you would, hand that off to me when you hand off your brief testimony page. And you've got another couple weeks to get that into me. All right, so we talked about divisions. I can't reinforce this enough. Church members should be willing to do what they have to do to get right with each other. You know, things happen. Sometimes, like, oh, I, I thought I was going to do that. No, I was told I was going to do that. 
And then sometimes little attitudes get exchanged, and it's like, you know what, people get offended, and sometimes people leave, like, not leave the church, but they leave that moment. And then I get a phone call, or I find out, hey, so-and-so's pretty upset about this. Well, did they go to the person and try to make it right? I don't know, but they're mad. <laughs> well, let's get so-and-so with the person that they're mad at and try to do that. That's biblical. We, act, you know, we really should be living like we've been forgiven by Jesus. Uh, this is not the, the Grace Lighthouse Church Club. We are the church of the living God. We're bought by Jesus Christ who paid for our sins and we have been forgiven by him. So, amen. So we want to make sure that the, you know, divisions, disagreement, you know, stuff that we could work out privately. Remember what Jesus says in Matthew 18? If your brother offends you, go to him privately. Not on the phone first, not on Facebook. Don't, you know, just don't go blab it. Do it. Be biblical. Pastor, I, you know, I, I went to this person and they don't want to talk to me anymore. Oh, okay, let's go to them together. That's, that's when he says, if you can't tell it, to, you know, tell it to the church. Well, then they don't want to, they're still mad. <laughs> but then they're gossipy and they're hurtful. Well, then we say you can't be here. If you can't reconcile, you can't be here. We don't want that type of stuff. We don't want so-and-so mad at so-and-so, and then, but they don't ever resolve it, but they kind of, they just sort of have this. And again, I'm not saying that every relationship is easy to reconcile, but I think if you're willing to gossip about it or complain about it, then you should be willing to make it right. That's sort of where I, where I go. And again, we're talking about the nitty-gritty. Hopefully this stuff doesn't happen, but it does happen. I've been in a church. I've seen not the, really more the church I got saved, shortly after I got saved, that church was going through, it seemed like a lot of, everybody just seemed mad at each other. <laughs> Why? You know, can't we all just get along? Can't we pull a Rodney King here? Can't we all just get along? You know, um, I think that's part of the way that we should think about, and I'm not saying be tolerant to, to false doctrine. That's not, all getting along means that we're all in agreement with the doctrine, and we love each other, and we want to make that part of, you know, the, you know, part of the, 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 the temperament of the church that we're all a part of. All right. Um, you guys know this. We, we do have a prayer meeting. We have an opportunity for you as a church member to communicate with me about prayer, pastor. Uh, my aunt died. My aunt is dying. My so-and-so, I'm having surgery. Um, would you pray for me? We want to know about that stuff. We don't want you going through that stuff alone. Um, we have, if you go to our prayer meeting, and certainly the, the prayer list is public information. It kind of stays at the church building where we, um, where we pray together. Um, so, but I mean, if, if, if people want to know, like, what are the prayer needs in the church and you don't get access to that list, we can make those available. We're not hiding it from people. It's just that we wind up having the prayer meeting and eventually we will be having a prayer meeting in the building that will be here hopefully soon, um, but we will continue to have prayer meeting. Prayer meeting is very important. There are things that we wrestle in prayer. I, I just love the hearts of people, and, and we should all know this if we're attending prayer meeting. None of us should just dominate the prayer meeting like only one person prayed for 30 minutes and nobody else prayed. We should try to be fair. Hey, take a couple minutes to pray. You know, maybe, I mean, some people are really good at, at you know, keeping their prayers concise and saying, Lord, and they might run through a few five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things, and they do it in about two to three minutes. Some people, and again, I can sometimes be long in prayer too. Listen, I get this, but we want to be sort of sensitive to the fact that if we're coming to prayer meeting, we're really devoting the first few minutes to a little Bible study that I've been doing, uh, and then we'll go to prayer. So that's always Wednesday nights at 630 and if you can't ever make it and you have a prayer request, please communicate that prayer line that's always on your bulletin, 7747-PRAYER. I get those prayer requests. Um, we see them and we can add them. And if you don't want your prayer request public knowledge, we can still be praying for you. So sometimes that's another privacy issue that we will do our best to respect. But if you tell us, hey, pray for me as part of the church, we're gonna be praying for you and your name's gonna wind up on a list Without going into the details, the list is, we, we try to scare the, uh, um, be scarce about the nitty gritty. You know, if somebody's like, hey, so-and-so's having uh, a surgery coming up on this. We sometimes don't identify every body part, okay? Just because there might be some privacy things going on there. 
Um, so we're not just trying to embarrass people or anything like that. That's the point. Okay, I got five minutes. Again, like, like last Sunday, uh, Teen Challenge is what we would classify. And moving on to missions is uh, part of our mission outreach. We allocate 10% of our annual budget to come from our general fund. Uh, we can have thousands of dollars sitting in our missions fund, and it's used for missions. Uh, we don't use it for benevolence. Oh, we got extra money in that fund. Can we add that to buying something for the building? Nope. No, we, we consider that to be, those are to be restricted finances, and we want a certain amount reserved for outreach because if we spend all the money on just things that we need, then we kind of forget about maybe we could have been a part of someone else's ministry. Teen Challenge, leaving here, and again, all that did not come out of our missions fund. It came through you generous people, you know, but we, we set aside a certain amount and said, you know, we can give you guys this right off the bat. We're going to be going to the Teen Challenge Banquet coming up in November, which is out in Worcester. If you want to be a part of that, please see me or see uh, Paul Andrews. We support other ministry organizations, our Thanksgiving outreach, uh, our Kids Festival. If we do Trunk or Treat again, these are all touches to the community that we classify in our realm as mission. This is outreach. This is money that we need to spend. We need supplies. We need food. The movie night coming up on Friday night that we consider part of missions. It's not just church entertainment. We have to get out of the mentality that we're just here to, as a group of people that um, are just, are, that's what we do. We just get together. We do things. We should do things, but we should also do things that say, hey, hey, community, come on over for today. Hey, community, come over to the movie night. Now, will they all come? No, not necessarily, but we might we get a few people because we've put out some information. We got, you guys are getting those little flyers. Pass them off to somebody. Get people here for the movie night. It's missions. It's a mission opportunity. Let us do the work. We've got a, you know, a little concert coming up, and then we have um, the movie, and I'll likely share the gospel or give some sort of gospel presentation at the end. So that's part of our missions. And finally, as um, you know, I believe in the, the promised return of our Savior. It actually drives me missionally as a pastor. I, I, it's like, oh, well, you guys just talk about eschatology. I talk about eschatology because it is highly missional. Because what we're going to talk about today in the tribulation that's coming upon the earth, if there's a chance to keep, opportunity to keep people from going in there, <laughs> you know it. And there's a deadline coming. It's called the rapture. The Lord Jesus can call up His church at any moment. And at that point, my service to Him is rendered complete in terms of what I did with my life for Him. Well, I was part of the church. Now I'm going to go to glory and I'm going to get to serve Him for all eternity. But at the same time, uh, that is so important that we keep future things as part of what drives our church missionally. We want people saved before they have to interact with a holy God unprepared. And if the rapture happens today and believers are taken out of here, they lost their chance to have any more conversation with you. Now it's time for them to either go to your house and find your Bible or whatever's, whatever, whatever is left of us. I Think about that. Think about your, every room in your house. How many little things might be a little witnessing tool? I'm not saying all this stuff will survive. Uh, there may be house cleaning and who knows what is going to happen to people's leftover Bibles and Bible tracts. They're telling me I've got to be done, which is totally fine. Um, next Sunday, I want you guys to come prepared with any questions. We're going to devote the first few minutes with questions regarding our church, membership, anything I've said up to this point. Um, you just write it down. If you like, I got a question, I don't have time to or ask me privately. We might deal with it publicly um, if I think it's an important thing for all of us you know, to hear. So let's pray and we'll finish this part and get ready for our service. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this privilege of uh, being together. I thank you for these precious saints, Lord, who want to be part of our work here at Grace Lighthouse Church in Wareham, Massachusetts, Lord. Thank you for the establishment of this local body of believers uh, for the purpose of keeping it clear of what our mission is all about and what drives us, Lord, missionally as a church. 
Thank you for your faithfulness. We love you, Lord, and we, we just ask you now to uh, just give us continued understanding of what does it really mean to be a member of a local church like this one. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening.